Welcome back, everybody, to Strong Women of God. My name is Maxine Higgins, and I am so happy to have Kirsty Foley joining us here. She is a certified doula and certified childbirth educator. And some of you might already be all in this world and know everything to know that there is to know about doulas. But if you're anything like me, maybe you haven't heard of it or you just heard of it. Um, I came about this because I am now at the time of shooting this 37 weeks pregnant. Um, and I was doing a lot of investigation on what the best kind of practices for me that felt good. Um, uh, and it came up to being an unmedicated out of hospital birth. So with midwives, and that's actually also how I came about learning about doula. So I'm super excited for this conversation and just for all the knowledge that Chrissy has, but let's welcome her. So hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me, Maxine. Hey, I'm glad we were able to connect this way. Um, we actually met at a church um, and you were actually pregnant when I met you. Right. Yep. Yep. About to pop. Yeah. <laughs> About to pop. Um, and so we connected, I think it's at one of our friends, mutual friends, like baby shower and like really got to talking. Um, but I just only recently found out that you're actually going down this path of, you know, becoming a doula or being a doula now. So do you want to just talk to us a little bit for those like who still don't know what it is? Like, first of all, what is a doula? Um, and then kind of tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm glad you said that because you're absolutely right that a lot of people don't know what doulas are, but they're becoming more and more popular because even the CDC is recommending doulas now since the um, cesarean rate is just so high and there are so many um, preventable C-sections happening. Um, and then of course, different surgical complications that are coming up because of these many like major surgeries that are happening for women who are actually low risk and really don't, don't necessarily need to be having C-sections. Um, and then also the black maternal mortality rate is so high that that is also a factor and not just black women, but women of color uh, in the United States are experiencing such higher rates of mortality around childbirth that um, that's another reason why the CDC is now um, recommending the use of doulas. So um, doulas are actually um, women who support other women through childbirth, there are postpartum doulas that are supporting you after the baby is born. And then there are labor doulas or birth doulas who are supporting you through labor. So um, uh, the role of the doula is supporting educationally, physically, and emotionally during labor. And um, it's basically, you know, a lot of people like to think of doula as an advocate, but really your doula helps to empower you to advocate for yourself in birth. So the role of your doula is not necessarily to speak for you um, to your medical staff, but to help you to find your birth voice, your birth voice, <laughs> to figure out what is it that I want for my birth? What is my dream birth? What, what would make me feel most empowered when I leave here to say, wow, I came in here, had this baby the way that I envisioned myself having this baby. Because of course that vision is different for every woman. You know, some women are brave like you, Maxine, and say, okay, my vision is to do this unmedicated. And that would make me most happy to walk out of here with a healthy baby and also to have been able to have this baby vaginally without medication. And then other women say, you know what? I'm not even going to try that. Let's shoot for the epidural. Um, I would like to do it vaginally, but no epidural. And other women are like, healthy baby, healthy mommy. That's all I want. So the role of the doula is to support, to find out what is your birth dream, and then to help you achieve those goals. And although um, he or she is not able to guarantee you a particular birth outcome, then they're there to help you with all the information, education, and emotional support that you need along the way when those twists and turns do come. Because sometimes we do like, encounter unexpected things in birth. And, you know, you create a birth plan and then things can take their own route sometimes. But when you have your doula there, they're able to point you to different ways to different methods to still get to still have a, a level of control. It doesn't have to be that if plan A doesn't work out, that means nothing I want is going to happen. 
uh, your doula can help you to figure out what is plan C, what is plan, uh, what is plan B, what is plan C, and how can we get there? And how can we get there in the most peaceful way where you feel like I still have choices and my voice is still able to be heard? That's awesome. I think um, one of the things, you know, I was explaining some of these terms, I guess, to like some of my circle who necessarily like hasn't been in this space and they're like, but why, why do you need this extra person there? And I think everything that you just said, I think this, this experience is all encompassing, right? And I think sometimes we underestimate how much of not just a physical like toll it's going to take, but also mental, emotional, all right. Of- and for yourself and even for your partner um, who is not necessarily trained, <laughs> you know, they're going to do their best to support you, but they're not necessarily trained in some of these other aspects. So I know for me, it's been really comforting um, having even, you know, prior to the, to the labor, like you were mentioning, like having somebody to walk through my birth preferences with really taking the time to like figure out what's actually going to make me comfortable in the space. And then being that extra support for me, myself and my husband too, because he's doing this for the first time too. Right. Uh, so for me, it's just, it's definitely provided another layer of comfort and also like the wealth of resources um, that a doula can bring to the space where, um, you know, if you're, and I don't know what like everybody's experience has been, but sometimes if you're going the like, hospital route, uh, it can be a quick, everything can kind of be moving really, really fast. Maybe you don't have all the questions answered that you need. Um, And then even, you know, with midwives, so that's the route that I'm going with the midwives, um, they're just not in the room the whole time, you know? And, you know, in the beginning of your pregnancy, maybe you're seeing them once a month, you know, but you've got Mm -hmm. all these questions. And I feel like having that doula there to support was like, so helpful. And I, I personally feel way more like prepared and ready to have someone, you know, else who kind of knows what I want um, in the room. So tell me a little bit though, about what made you decide to like go into this. Before I answer that question, I want to touch on something you just said, as far as your husband, um, because that's another huge part of doulas that, that people don't really think about because obviously it's about mommy and baby, but also a doula is really, really helpful in taking some of the pressure off of that partner. (laughs) Because your partner is still a human being too. And honestly, um, whether your partner, I mean, of course, not everyone has their husband there in labor. Some people have, you know, a friend or their mom or whoever that is. They don't have all the same hormones that mom has going on. So the hormones that she has going on, they're going to help her stay awake through long hours of labor. (laughs) Those hormones are going to keep her like, okay, got to get this baby, got to get this baby. And it's just something instinctual that comes out in her that drives her through whether she hasn't had much to eat, hasn't had much sleep, no matter the circumstances, God has already built it in us to be able to, we're going to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. But your partner doesn't have those same hormones going on. So when you have a doula, the doula helps to relieve some pressure from that partner so that they can go and get something to eat or, you know, close their eyes for a second if they need to, if it's a really, really long labor or go use the bathroom and not worry about leaving you alone at any point so that you have continuous support, um, no matter what breaks your partner needs to take and your break can take, your partner can take those breaks without feeling guilty <laughs> about leaving you alone, especially in active labor when the contractions are intensifying and you're like, I need some kind of counter pressure on my back, where are you? <laughs> and you know, you can, you can rotate um, having that doula um, as well as the doula being able to help your partner know how to best help you. Mm-hmm. Because men especially, you know, they have it in their hearts, they wanna help, but they a lot of times have no idea yeah. what to do to be most helpful. And they may be doing some things in labor and then their wife or girlfriend, whoever is like, no, stop doing that. Stop doing that. And (laughs) she doesn't really know what to tell him to do, but your doula does. So, um, so I'm glad that you brought up your, your husband there. Um, and so to answer your question of how did I get into this? Um, I think that most doulas you'll talk to have a very similar story. Usually doulas either got into it because they had a really, really great birth and they want to help other people have great births or they had a really horrible birth. And they want to prevent that in other people, help prevent birth trauma. And of course, you have doulas who don't have any children and they just fell in love with 
childbirth because maybe they love babies and started exploring more or were into or studied um, some level of um, childhood development or education through school. So for me, my story actually started with my own pregnancies. And just like you, Maxine, I did a lot of research on my pregnancies. Um, but for me, after the baby came out, I thought that that research would stop like, okay, mission accomplished. But I just kept on researching because I loved it so much. And then by the time my second pregnancy came around, I was thinking, you know what, you know, I've done all this research. I feel ready the second time around. I probably won't be doing all this research. And I find myself researching even more <laughs> and just diving in head first. Um, I had both of my births were unmedicated. The first was a hospital birth and the second one was a home birth. And after I had that home birth, that was everything just through the roof. Okay, well, um, I was sitting down and in prayer and the Holy Spirit just dropped it in me that your passion for childbirth is not just for you, mm -hmm. it's for others. And so he just pushed me like, it's time for you to use this, turn it around and start investing in other mothers. Because already I found myself every single time I talked to someone who was either trying to conceive, thinking about it or pregnant, then motor mouth. Like, <laughs> I feel like I can't stop talking. I'm so excited. And I, you know, just that feeling of, I feel alive. This makes me come alive when I talk about it. And when I'm able to encourage someone else who maybe wanted a natural childbirth, but was afraid or just terrified of childbirth in general. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in my personal story, then the Lord led me through a journey in both pregnancies to help eliminate fear, where even as a first time mom, I walked into childbirth with no fear at all, but just meditating on the word of God, you know, where perfect love casts out all fear. So perfect God is here. God is perfect love. There is no fear here. There is no fear in love. Uh, one of my biggest prayers throughout both of my pregnancy was I want to go into labor fearless. Mm -hmm. And God answered that to a major degree, both times, just like flooded with peace. And then along with that peace came a sense of power where I walked away from both childbirth experiences feeling like, like a mountaintop experience. Like I feel, I feel stronger than I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. Like it, it showed me a power in me that I didn't even know I had. And I knew God had that power. I knew he was able to do anything. I knew that prayer worked, but walking through those experiences where it's some of the most challenging things you've ever done, but then watching God pull things out of you, even in the hardest moments and bring beauty out of some of the hardest times, beauty that makes you for days on end, just all you can say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, some people like to call it that birth high. I feel like for me, my birth high was like on steroids. <laughs> it was that physical birth high of the, the hormones, but then it was also my spirit just like floating, floating on cloud nine of father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, because it didn't have to happen this way, but it did. Yeah. I could have had a lot of birth trauma, but instead my heart is overflowing with gratitude that, you know, I'm, of course, it's all worth it just to have a healthy baby. A healthy baby is the primary goal here. But at the same time, when you think about God's best for our life and God's best for childbirth, then it could be, this is God's design. You know, when you think about the way that a child is born, God himself designed it. And I do believe that you know, in, in this world, a lot of things have come to taint that picture and to make it something that's terrifying to women and, um, and to, to, to pervert it to something that it was never designed to be. So um, for me, I, I do believe that God specifically called me to this as a women's ministry to be able to help other women, not just, 
not just women of God, but women in general, because of course God loves every single woman on the face of this planet. God designed childbirth, no matter who is coming through. And childbirth is something that has been here from the beginning of time and always will be. Mm -hmm. So to me, it is absolutely a calling, a call of God on my life to say that this is not just for you, but this is something that I want you to bring to other women so that they are able to walk in this powerful peace that comes from the Prince of Peace as creator God, who created this baby inside of your womb, created your body to be able to do this without I mean, of course, I'm, I'm not knocking, you know, some of the interventions. Some things are absolutely necessary. You can say, praise God that that was in place, you know, in modern medicine to be able to do this. But in many, many cases for normal pregnancies, then God has put it in our bodies to be able to do it naturally. And um, as a doula, it's my honor to be able to help other women to live that out the way that God designed it to be. Hmm. That's so powerful. And thank you so much for sharing that. I immediately like, like listening to you, I remember being in that space kind of where you were mentioning of, I guess, maybe so much listening to everything else and outside of, and being absolutely terrified of birth, like to the point where I was like, I don't know that I want to do this. You know, like there were so many other reasons as well, why I like delayed. And I was like, "Mm, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about this. But one of them was also like, the picture that's sort of painted around childbirth as being this traumatic, you know, uh, terrible thing that people go through. Um, And I even remember, like, I was just talking to my friend about this, but I went to like a dinner with her and a bunch of other people. And uh, a few moms had like almost just given birth. It was like their first time out after. So they're Mm -hmm. all sharing their um, birth stories. And at that point, I didn't know that there was any difference between like giving birth at a hospital or home or birth center, like anything. Um, but they were horrible stories, like just trauma. And I was like, there you go. Never doing this. Like, you know, (laughs) and the thing that I found out is that a lot of the, um, you know, things that kind of make births a little bit more traumatic are actually some of these unnecessary interventions that happen. Um, and it makes it much more difficult for this. But I think what you mentioned earlier is such like an incredible uh, component to this of like really understanding that this is God's design for our bodies, that we can do this, that we're created to do this. Um, and that being able to connect in that like spiritual space and level as you're giving birth, like we were mentioning that perfect love cast out fear. And that that goes for this process too. You right. Know, beautiful, like thing to meditate on before you're going into this process during the process and after the process even you know so I appreciate you so much for for sharing that um I want to talk to you a little bit more um sort of about uh some of the things that you you learned along the way I guess for women who are maybe on the fence of thinking about maybe do I do I do this like a home birth do I just go to the hospital hospital's always right Do I, you know, go through, you know, a birth center? Can you just talk a little bit about like what those options look like or even maybe some misconceptions around some of those options? Absolutely. Um, So I think that there are misconceptions. I think the thing obviously that is the norm in today's society in America is having a hospital birth. So the thing that has the most misconceptions about it is that the hospital is the safest place to have your baby and the home is the most unsafe place that there are far too many variables at home that, you know, what happens if the baby is not breathing and then what are you going to do? And, uh, you know, you're putting yourself in your, your body and your baby in danger. But, um, whenever a woman is going into, okay, I'm pregnant now, this baby's got to come out. Let's explore these options of how this baby is going to come out. Then the best thing to do is to do, oh, sorry about that, is to do your research. And when you do your research, then you will actually find that the body responds best in an environment where it is most comfortable. So if a woman feels like, okay, having a baby at home is way too stressful. I don't even want to think about that then don't have your baby at home if it would stress you out to be at home. But if you feel like being at home in my own space is where I'm going to be most relaxed 
and feel most comfortable and most safe, your body is going to respond the best in that environment. So childbirth is all about opening. You know, you're, when you think about, of course, Maxine, you're experiencing it in your body right now as the hormone relax and is making everything loose and open, makes you a little bit more injury prone, a little bit more unstable, a little bit more wobbly because it's preparing all of your ligaments and everything to open, you know, so the baby can come out. And in the process of, I mean, how largely hormonal this is, I mean, adrenaline, when that gets going, that fight or flight hormone that is secreted when you feel fearful, um, then it actually goes to tense the body up to make you start closing up. And then oxytocin, that love hormone, the bonding hormone, then once again, so that gets you those contractions going. And you got to have those contractions. The, the adrenaline is going to actually prohibit oxytocin. Mm -hmm. So whatever environment you choose to have your baby in is extremely important. The truth is you can have your baby anywhere, but it will take longer under certain circumstances. So you have to figure out what do I feel is going to make me most comfortable and feel safest. And in that environment, the hormones of your body, biologically, labor is going to be smoother for you in that environment. So for some reason, studies have shown that there, there's reduced um, postpartum hemorrhage when you have a baby at home, that there is reduced uh, tearing at home. Um, there are, there are a lot of, there's a lot of research that does support um, shorter labors at home because you're more comfortable, because you're more relaxed and you have more oxytocin flowing in that environment and you have far less adrenaline. You also have a lot less interference. Mm -hmm. So um, just the reason that I chose a home birth after I had already had a hospital birth, my first reason was COVID-19 and I did not want COVID to make me not be able to have who the people that I wanted at my birth. So I knew that I wanted my husband and my mom and because of COVID-19, then they were saying, well, only one support person. So that got me researching home birth. And the more I researched, the more comfortable and confident I personally felt with that option. And I'm definitely not trying to push home birth on everybody. Obviously, birth centers are really, really great options too, because um, you get the same like all natural holistic approach. Um without like the level of preparation that's involved in a home birth, because obviously you have to prepare your home and prepare lots of things in your home. Um, for me, it was totally worth it. Um, and then also, I'm not trying to persuade people towards that either. For some people, like I said, if you feel most comfortable at a hospital, where to you, hospital reads safety, then your body may respond a little bit better in the hospital. Um, the, the thing is, you have to determine first, what are your birth goals? Um, because the hospital approach is towards medicine. You have to think about who is serving you. If you have a medical doctor, a surgeon, an OB, an obstetrician is a surgeon. So they are most prepared for, um, for surgery, which is, I mean, we have lots of C-sections, which is a major surgery um, to put the baby out of your abdomen. And for medical doctors, that is a safety zone for them. That is a, a route that to them um, doesn't involve as much risk as having a vaginal birth, all the different things that can arise. So because their approach to childbirth is different from midwives who do the home births and, and um, birth center births, because their approach is different, their perspective is different, and then they're going to approach everything that pops up in your birth very, very differently. So um, for someone who wants medication where you say, well, I don't wanna do the all natural thing, or I don't know if I wanna do all natural, then go to the hospital <laughs> because at home, there is nothing for you but a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, there are lots of comfort measures that we can put in place, but there's no medication that you're gonna get at home. So the option of an epidural, if you are, preparing for home birth and then you decide these contractions are going and I need something stronger 
than what my doula is providing for me, then um, you would have to be transferred into the hospital, which you still can do at that point. You know, it's never like a, you know, it's not too late until the baby's here. <laughs> so uh, you can absolutely transfer if you want to. Um, but if you're someone like me who already knew that I really don't, am, am not into medication. I'm one of those people who have a headache. I tough it out like <laughs> for everything. So um, just depending, you know, uh, some people, I think a, a, a really big misconception is some women have really high pain tolerances and those women can do home births and I cannot. I think that's a really big um, misconception because if you've never been in labor before, you don't know what your contractions are going to feel like. And if you have not yet practiced the art of relaxation and these different comfort techniques like counter pressure and acupuncture, I mean, acupressure and, you know, lots of like cold therapy, heat therapy, lots of different things that you can use during labor to, um, to change the way that your body perceives pain and to relieve pain in different ways, then you really don't know what it's going to feel like. And you don't know that it will be unbearable. And, um, People, just like you, Maxine, when, when I told them before I had my first child that I wanted an unmedicated birth, I was laughed at. Mm. And, um, and don't even get me started with some of the stuff that I said about my supernatural childbirth I was going to have in the name of Jesus. I got <laughs> laughed at, <laughs> laughed at seriously. But by the time my second childbirth came around and they saw that I did it and I wasn't playing, then I didn't get any more laughs after that because it's like, oh, okay, well, excuse me. Obviously she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> um, but the first time around, I definitely got lots of looks. And, um, and especially when people heard when I was doing a home birth, like, oh my God, really? Why? <laughs> um, and I think that um, in communities of color, um, there is, there are even more of those question marks because it's not as, it's not as common. And, um, of course there, there are so many things to address as far as childbirth in communities of color, which to me is part of the reason why, um, doulas are even more important, um, even more important in the communities of people who are not the first to go seek out doulas mm -hmm. because, don't think that women of color are seeking doulas as quickly as white women are, but then women of color, black women specifically are dying three to four times more in okay. childbirth than white women. Okay. So sometimes the people who need it the most are the ones who are not getting it. And um, when, when you have, I mean, we have so many things as far as, um, as far as these background reasons of why our uh, maternal mortality rate is so high. Um, and then once you add racism in the system on top of it, then it's through the roof. And that's why our numbers are as bad as what they are. But, um, but for anyone, um, particularly in my opinion, in my humble opinion, particularly women of color, I believe that having births outside of the hospital give you more control and more power that you actually need to be harnessing now more than ever. And, and really, I can't say more than ever because it's not like as far as the racism part of it, it's not like that's actually gotten worse. Right. It's been, there. it's just a lot more exposed now than it was back then. But it's not just racism. There are white women who are having very, very traumatic births in hospitals and who are reporting things that their obstetricians did and said towards them in childbirth that is outrageous. Okay. So then if you have white women having these experiences, how much more are black women having these experiences? And the, the rates of those kind of things are just not happening for home births and for birth center births. They're not happening with midwifery care um, on the same levels that they're happening with obstetric care. So um, I do believe that it's time for women of color to start doing their research and get more comfortable with exploring other options because what we have been doing so far is not looking good. Yeah. It's not looking like it's working. Um, and overall, it's not, it's, it's not going well for us as a people. So, I think it's time for us to 
you know, open up our eyes, step out of our comfort zone, start trying something new. And with that something new, it may seem like you have fewer options because you don't have as many options with medication and everything, but you actually have far more autonomy, far more control over your birth experience than what you would have in a hospital. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. And I, and I, I do remember part of, um, again, you know, I felt also called to do this, this route. I was one of those people that before I got pregnant um, and was thinking about it, working my, my mind through whether I even wanted to do this. I was like, well, fine. If I do it, I want to be all the medications. I want to drug up. I was like, if you can knock me out and I just wake up and the baby is there, sign me up, you know? And then I got pregnant. And then I got pregnant and I, and I felt like in my spirit, Holy Spirit, like, nope, you're not going to do it that way. And I was like, wait, mm-hmm. what? Like the fear didn't go away, but I felt called to it. Um, the yeah. fear really started to go away as I started to learn more about it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so as I started to research and kind of some of the stats that you just mentioned, um, I was like, wait, actually for a, a healthy, normal, pregnant woman, you know, the rates are actually better outside of the hospital care. Right? Yep. And so that was a major factor. And then thinking about, yeah, women of color and how much they struggle. I mean, honestly, you know, I went to one OB uh, appointment when I first found out I was pregnant just to confirm the pregnancy. Um, and mm-hmm. I know it's not the case everywhere. There are probably incredible OBs and, and situations, but my particular experience after knowing I'm already gonna go the uh, midwife route, um, I went just cause I was impatient and I was like, I just want to get this test and I yeah. had the worst experience. It was, t- and it just confirmed everything. I mean, like I wasn't heard. They were trying to rush me out after making me wait an hour to get into, to begin with. Um, yeah. they were, you know, I found out afterwards they gave me an unnecessary procedure. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, like, I remember <laughs> I told my husband when I came home, the, the, the OB was like, oh, make sure you don't read. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was trying to say, like, don't put too much information in your head. Like, don't do too much research. And I was like, what? This is like my first kid. Of course I'm going to do my research. What are you talking about? Wow. It was just a very um, jarring experience for me. And it just confirmed the call, right? Like, you're going to do this a different route. And so one of the things that um, I have been sort of, really passionate about, even with, you know, strong women of God is also like coming at this from a different perspective, because for so many women, unless they see someone who looks like them doing it, they don't mm-hmm. think it's an option. Right. So it's so important that we are highlighting women of color choosing this route. It is so important that we're highlighting doulas and midwives of color who are doing this as well. Um, that's not just a special sort of group that gets to go through this process. Um, right. So I appreciate you like sharing. I appreciate you listening to God on the call and following this path because I think it is, it's so necessary and important. Um, and, you know, I, I was even talking with my mom, you know, and she's a nurse um, and like, she's telling me, she's like, man, I didn't even know some of this stuff, you mm-hmm. know, but it, it's kind of what you mentioned earlier. You were saying like, you have to understand like when you're going to, um, you know, a, uh, you know, a this is pregnancy brain in action right now. Right. <laughs> the surgeons, like you're going to the hospital, they're, they're, they're just medically minded. They're looking right. at your pregnancy as a medical emergency. And so mm-hmm. they're trying to prevent damage. They're trying to prevent, you know, this kind of catastrophic event from happening. When right. reality, for most women, pregnancy is actually going to be normal, whatever that means, but it's not going to be an emergency. Your body exactly. is meant to do this. And so having someone who matches that, I think is so important. Um, and the other thing that I love that you mentioned is that you have to do what you feel comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. Because that's it. Like for some women, like how you're mentioning, you are going to be more stressed out to be at home. If you can't get your brain to stop panicking about all of the what ifs that could happen it's Mm -hmm. not the right place for you regardless you know um so I love that you say that because I think sometimes in this conversation it can come across very much like this is the only way to do it and like that's not what we're saying at all we're saying there's an alternative 
and do the research, um, ask questions, um, listen to other people's stories who have done it both ways. You know, that was some of the most helpful for me to like hear women who did it, you know, hospital one route and then second one did it at a birth center or at home. Um, mm-hmm. So that's incredible. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, if people, I know that you have an Instagram account. I've been watching your videos and you have like great tips and just things on, on labor and pregnancy and all of that. Um, how can people get connected with you and, um, and follow you? Yeah, absolutely. On uh, Instagram and Facebook, both um, listed as kirstie.doula. That's K-I-R-S-T-I-E dot doula. Um, and then also my website, it's powerfulpeacedoula.com. Awesome. And do you want to just really quickly just uh, talk about some of the services you provide? Because I know you do provide doula services, but you also have some classes I saw that come up. So like childbirth educator. Yeah. So um, just the way I was talking about um, in this session, how important it is to know your options and, you know, know what some of your rights are, know um, how to walk into your whatever birth location you choose and to have a level of control um, it's, you can't do that without the education, without the knowledge. So, um, so I teach childbirth classes. Um, my approach to those childbirth classes is to give you, um, a a combination of things so that you are, you know, it's not just one particular approach, um, that way for those who want to do the natural side, then we have those things. And then you also know your options for, let's say you decide you want to do natural and you change your mind. (laughs) You need to know what those options are. So, I take you through the medical side as well as the natural side, as well as a holistic approach, because um, we all know that labor is very highly hormonal and emotional as well. So it's not just the anatomy of knowing, okay, this is how the uterus works and this is how your cervix cervix works, but you also need to be prepared emotionally, mentally, and spiritually for childbirth. Yeah, that's incredible. And we'll put all that information down in the description. So if you're interested, follow her look up the classes, sign up for the classes, get educated. I think that that is going to be the the biggest game changer in your process. But Kirstie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. Um, Thank you. If you have questions, connect with her. Just just chat with her, send her a message on the IG or on her website. Um, But for everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us at strongwomen underscore of underscore God. And until next time, take care. 